What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Nita, your favorite diva, and I'm back. We are talking Power Book for Force. I'm so happy to be discussing this new installment in the Power Universe. So excited. Tommy's Book for Force. We're talking all of the characters. We're talking um, all of the season regulars, and we're going to take a little deep dive and let you know my opinions on each character. So let's get into it. And this crazy white boy saved your alleged gun jamming ass and just bounce with your paper and drugs. Like cast with a ghost. All right, so first up on the docket, we have Isaac Keys. Keys plays Diamond. He is a gentle giant with truthful eyes and a body made of granite with defensive precision. A trait drilled into him during his 15-year sentence. Before Diamond got locked up, he was the young head of Chicago's most promising crew that was taking over the city. In a short time at the helm, he created a tactical drug running outfit respected by all of Chicago's crime families. He spent his time in prison reading the classics, educating himself from everything from history, literature to philosophy. Now that he's out, Diamond plans on taking the reins back from his crew's interim leader, his younger brother. All right, so that was a nice, healthy chunk of what we need to know in order to get to know who Diamond is. Who is Diamond? Okay, so me um, evaluating his character from episodes one to three, I say that it's a little spot on. I think the writing and the execution, I think they need to do a better job at showcasing his intelligence, um, the experience that he had on the streets, and all of the educating that he's educating himself with, um, with the history, the literature, and philosophy. I think they could do a better job with that. Um, but I just think he's one of those people that's a little complicated, but I don't think that they're doing a good job with showcasing um, him in a like a manner that, that gives him some kind of force, like some presence behind him. So I think that's what I'm missing at this point. Um, of course, we're only three episodes in, so that may change. Figured I'd introduce myself to the man who seems to have little regard for his own short life. Look at you out here in these streets rolling up on me like a motherfucking OG. Daddy know you out here? How come he ain't never put you on? I'm on, different role. Yeah, well, wherever he has you, it ain't nowhere close to where you should be. Now we have Lily Simmons. She portrays Claudia Claude Flynn, one of my favorite characters thus far in Force, the only daughter to the largest kingpin in Chicago. Astute doesn't begin to describe her. Her intellect is a mixture of Ivy League lecture halls and Chicago street smarts. She is as brilliant as a politician and as, as blunt as a pipe wrench to the face. Claude does not need the green light or permission to set things in motion. She is a fire starter and the one person in Chicago no one should ever count out. In a male-dominated business, Claude is determined to carve out her own path and one that might just save her family in the end. Now, like I said, she is one of my favorite characters. I like the way she moves. I like her attitude. I like that she knows exactly what she wants. Um, I believe that um, she is one of the strongest characters um, other than Tommy in the show. Um, can't wait to see where she's going with this. Well, we do know that she likes girls, so we don't know whether or not she's totally, I, I want to say that she's probably bi, but she would probably lean more to the female side. Um, but she's always giving her brother advice. She's always, um, <clears throat> in her father's office and hot take, high prediction. I think because of the way her father treats her, I don't 
think that she reveres him in a way that they try to make it seem. I think that if she senses any little bit of weakness in him, or if he was on his deathbed from this cancer that he has, she would pull the plug. <laughs> I'm just saying, you heard it here first. It's my prediction that um, she wants power and she will do it in whatever manner or fashion she sees fit. So digging her character, love her character. Can't wait to see more. I know she's going to be working with Tommy. She's going to be working with her little um, friend that she's, um, you know, having, you know, escapades with. So I am so excited to see where her character goes. You know, you look like you've already had a day. And it's only 11 a.m. How you know that? I'm a bartender. Reading people is part of my job. Some days you just need a whiskey before noon. Okay, you all. We got Gabrielle Ryan here. Ryan is Gloria Oklo, a razor shop and stunning former Marine carving her own path in Chicago. She is passionate, fiery, and beholden to no man. Out of a small kitchen in the back of her bar, she pumps out Michelin-level Jamaican-inspired dishes. Her clientele is a revolving door of Irish mobsters looking to move in on her real estate. This doesn't stop Gloria's hustle and dream of one day owning her own restaurant and being free from under the watchful eye of the crime family that she's entangled with. A chance encounter with Tommy quickly causes a seismic shift in the lives of those around her, only that she can unravel. Okay, you guys, so Glow, Gloria, she's okay. I, I like her kind of as a character. Um, and they're doing this kind of, of course, um, she is Tommy's love interest at the moment. Don't know if she will be the only one. But she is the only one at the moment. And um, she seems to be having this entanglement with Vic as well from the Flynn, the Flynn family. And that's just kind of getting on my nerves a little back and forth between that or whatever. Um, because it's just so cliche for me. It's just so cliche. But I do like her and Tommy's chemistry. I would say that you need to keep your eye on her. From what I saw in episode three, I don't know. She's just trying to check out a little something, something. I, I saw how she was looking around, trying to peep things out. I mean, I know you got to be aware of your surroundings, but I was like, mm, does that mean she going to be a nosy little, nosy little mouse? You know? All right. Well, I don't know. But so far, so good. Hey, keep moving. We don't want to ask you again. Move your fucking car. See, now I'm confused. Because it sounded like you just asked me again. All right. I got this, Simon. Hey, you deaf prick! Oh. Okay, you guys. That was Shane Harper. He plays Vic Flynn. The heir to the apparent Chicago's largest crime family. A prince who leads with his heart just as much as his fist. Vic resents the fact that his father has mapped out his entire life for him, both in business and in love. Vic can roll with Chicago's wealthiest socialites just as easily as he can get down with Chicago's heaviest dealers. Realizing that his father has taken a shine to Tommy, Vic will fight to regain control of his rightful position at any and all costs. Looking to move his family business forward and bury old beefs, Vic allegiance to his family is put to the test. Where he come, where he comes out on it will impact the entire city of Chicago's power structure. Alrighty, with Vic's character so far from episodes from one to three that I can gather, he they write him to be a little on the weak side. 
And I didn't really care for that. I didn't like his character in the first and the second episode. However, in the third episode, I'm trying to get a liking to him. Like I'm, I'm trying to take like he was moving a little better, made a little bit more sense. And, you know, he still did this weird thing with, um, Gloria trying to buy her love and, and try to be kind of stalkerish or whatever. He was still giving that vibe. But um, as far as his movements in the street, I thought he did a pretty good job with kind of making me kind of, you know, give him a chance. I'll start to give him a chance again. What do y'all think about Vic Flynn's character? Leave it down in the comments. And this crazy white boy saved your alleged gun jamming ass and just bounced with your paper and drugs. Like cast with a ghost. All right, so we got Chris Lofton. Lofton portrays Jannard Sampson, not the traditional student, but a shining star that is gifted from birth. Jannard was accepted to Brown University within days of his older brother Diamond being sentenced to 15 years. Jannard parked his ambitious of academia and took the reins of one of Chicago's largest crews. Buffeted by the benefits of Diamond being his big brother and his keeper, he took power of the organization with unbridled ability of a CEO along with the wild energy to end anybody that crosses him. Uh, as far as Jannard's character, eh, I'm 50-50 I'm with him. I don't really rock with him too much. They did not... I, I'm thinking because they wanted to write Tommy as the stronger character, they've kind of made the other characters look not as good. So I'm kind of struggling. You know, they're the heads and these the CEOs of these gangs and the way they perform and the way they move, I just, it ain't clicking with me. So I ain't really feeling it. And then he also has like this little... um with with his brother I, I can see a power struggle taking place and I don't know if I really like that either and as far as um Diamond I think Diamond he really should keep his he keep his nose clean but you know when you when you have power you want to take it back you know what I'm saying so I think that's just one of those things but we'll see we'll see how it go and who the fuck are you I'm her grandson who the fuck are you? I'm her fucking grandson. What you know about that? This what the fuck I know about that. Look, there's a lot for me to process. Okay, so now we have Anthony Fleming the third. Um, he plays J.P. Gibbs, a gifted jazz musician who's toured several continents, developing a rich worldliness that comes through his swagger and his collage of diverse tattoos. J.P. owns and operates a blues club with his ailing father that has been a target of several attacks by local gang members. <clears throat> As rich as J.P. life is, he still carries the pain of never having had a mother in his life and having a son he has no relationship with. J.P. world is thrown off his axis when he crosses paths with Tommy. Okay, so we have J.P. J.P. seems like he's good people. He's cool, you know, very much so cool, calm, collected. He has some issues with him. Um, I think that he's like on the straight and narrow, but I don't know. You know, we always going to, you know, keep it in the back of our mind that something else can be going on. There could be some other ulterior motives going on here. But for the most part, I think um, his character is cool. We do know that he is um, either bisexual or gay. 
Um, he does have a son, so that speaks to, you know, the bisexualness of it all. But, um, you know, he asked Tommy, was it going to be a problem? He's like, nah, X to the X. So, you know, for the most part, I like their relationship. I think it's cool. I, I really like to see this father. They keep talking about this ailing father. I love to see him. I guess we'll see him, uh, later on down the line, but for the most part, I like him. I like him. He brings a cool, innocent element to this chaotic story. Okay, so we have Lucian Cambrick. He is Darnell. He plays D. Mac McDowell, a young man who has been raised in the streets of Chicago South Side, independent, fiercely loyal, and completely unflinching when called upon to represent his crew. D. Mac is still a kid at heart looking for someone to take care of him. After a run-in with Tommy proves to be more than a fluke, D. Mac looks to Tommy as he hits a crossroads in his life that completely can completely append his future. Okay, D Mac. You know, I keep on getting him um confused with Ezekiel. Um, but it looks like D Mac is gonna have a part to play in this show. Um e even though Ezekiel seems like he has the bigger role, um, it looks like um D Mac is going to have the recurring regular role that's going to really blossom into something. Um, he's hurt. He's a hurt child. It's so crazy. Like the six degrees and the six laws of separation exists in this world. And, you know, just knowing that you can be dibbling and dabbling and you don't even know who you dibbling and dabbling with. So anyway, I'm curious to see how this is going to work out. And, um, will he actually have a run in with his father? Cause I don't hear anything happening about that in, in this um, breakdown. Listen, it's Jesse fucking James in the fucking flesh. Walter Flynn. Yeah, I've made quite the impact on my family here. And my city. You know who the first victim of that fire was? Okay, we have Tommy Flanagan. You may know him from Sons of Anarchy. He plays on a lot of different things. But um, Flanagan is Walter Flynn, the big honcho, the head of the average crime family in Chicago. Despite living a life of immense prosperity in his castle on the lake, he longs for the way things used to be. Walter believes that without community family, there is no tradition, and his deeply held code of honor bleeds into every aspect of his life. As he's ushered his family into the 21st century, Walter quickly saw the criminal organization he built facing threats he never accounted for. Okay, so Walter Flynn, Walter Flynn, for some reason... They are propping him up to be the big, big man on campus, but I don't see um, Walter lasting for too long. Despite him having cancer, which is a big thing, right? You know, a lot of times these older figures, they are struck with some kind of ailments. You see that in most of the shows um, nowadays. But um, for some reason, I really don't, think that he is going to last too long and not because of you know external threats not because of external threats I think that because what happens when you get into different generations and you're ushered into different ideologies and pathologies and the way people think people don't have the same type of reverence for the things they used to be you got to make make uh, room for other things to come and I think what is to come is Claudia. His daughter is coming for his spot. So, yeah, it's just good to see all of this come together. This is basically um, my breakdown of Force, the character descriptions, what I think about the characters from episode one to three. Um, 
I like it. It's good. It's interesting. And of course, we all know the person, Tommy. Tommy is going to be Tommy. Tommy just going to be Tommy and out here. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's a cool show. Um, despite it being a little slow, I think it's a little meticulous. And I really enjoy what they are bringing to the table because I just feel like it's a little fresh and a little newer and stuff like that so i hope you guys are enjoying it get down in the comments and let me know what you think make sure you like comment and subscribe to the channel i'm nita your favorite diva and you make sure you come back